Gooey duck is a very sought after species. It's a native burrowing clam in the state of Washington. It's actually the largest burrowing clam species. We are one of the largest players in the farmed gooey duck space. We are targeting somewhere around a million pounds a year. The crop takes six years to grow and it can be as much as $100 on the plate. It's very expensive. There's no machinery at any stage of the game. So from our hatchery to the nursery, to the beach, to the processing plant, all of it's done by hand. All right, we're just rolling out to our, our Goo Duck nursery out here in Totten Inlet getting ready to start our day, uh, which is uh, planting gooey ducks, one of our first low tides of the spring season. So this here, which what I'm standing on, is our gooey duck nursery float. This is a apparatus that we engineered in-house, fully custom. This raft itself is really quite handy. It allows us to be able to access the gooey duck all day long versus having to work with the intertidal. Overnight, when no one's working, this piston will go down and this whole frame will go back underwater. And this will just look like one flat float. Allows us to keep kind of a low profile out here, which is really the goal. These trays just came off of the shelves of this uh, nursery float. The gooey duck at this stage are living in sand. There's about a thousand gooey duck or so in each one of these trays. Like a clam or an oyster, they have siphons. One half of their siphon is actually pulling in food and clean water, and then their other side is their discharge. So gooey duck in particular, their shells are really brittle, especially when they're small. It's really important to handle them very carefully from this stage on. And what they're doing is they're very gently washing the sand from the gooey duck itself. They've taken low pressure water and they've sifted the sand out and let the gooey ducks fall onto this netting. And what they're doing is they're going through and they're identifying gooey duck that's alive, it's healthy, it's in good condition. They're pulling out any dead shell, any debris, any fouling in order to get perfect gooey duck that is gonna be successful to plant on the farm. And then uh, they're gonna count and see how many seeds that they have. So Taylor Shellfish is a family owned business. The first farms that we had were farming Olympia oysters and that goes back to 1890. And then our infamous uh, gooey duck, early 1990s. There is very limited areas that gooey duck grow. I mean, it's native to just this area. And the markets in, in Asian communities, they seek high dollar. That's how we're gonna keep track of the quantities that we're gonna go plant on the beach. They're gonna put two of them in each of these bags to get ourselves to approximately a thousand count of gooey duck. In the early stage of gooey duck's life, there's a lot of predators that want to eat it. If you don't do it right, you could have crabs, flounder, ducks, you name it, could come and eat your entire crop in one tide cycle. And so we have to be very careful on the time of year and how we protect the gooey duck from predation. These are our gooey duck nursery tubes. And the whole purpose of these is just to protect the baby gooey ducks from predators for their first couple years of life. We'll remove these at either 18 months, sometimes maybe more like 30 months. And so what the guys will do is they'll come and they'll go through and they'll poke holes, four holes per tube. And then they'll be planting a seed in each one. From there, they'll do what they normally do and they'll just dig themselves down into the ground. Well, we're gonna end up with around 80 to 90,000 seed per acre. As they get bigger, they grow and they go deeper into the sand. They don't move. They're not like a type of clam that gets up and walks and moves and finds a new home. It is where you plant it is where it stays for its entire life. So all of our farms are intertidal, which means that they're underwater at high tide and they get exposed at the low tide. And they're gonna go as fast as they can because they've got a short window. They hit low tide, water's coming back in. Water comes in, you're done for the day. There's only so many tides in a year. You miss half your tide, that's two hours, you don't get it back, it's gone. There's a lot of planning that goes into making sure that we have enough time to do what we need and we're not either oversupplying seed or undersupplying it. And from that point, it's about a six year wait until the gooey duck comes to size, until it's ready to be harvested for market. So we've just arrived here at the beach that we've got our scheduled harvest on for today. Tide is just now starting to recede and show the bed. 
And so we'll be uh, getting ready to harvest now. So you can see them stomping through. When you stomp, the ducks will respond and they'll dig down, which will make a little hole, make them easier to find. So you stomp around, scare them, they retract their necks, and then you got them. So gooey duck harvesting is a very gentle process. As hardy as they look, they're a gentle creature and you need to, to treat them as such. The traditional way of harvesting gooey duck is doing it underwater, diving. Either way, they're using a low velocity sea pump with a small hose to gently liquefy the sand in order to free the animal from its resting place. Here's what we call a, our harvest wand. Valve for your wand and then from there you just direct the water with your hand. And so like right here, we've got a gooey duck there. Gently try not to blast the duck directly or you'll break it. And all you're doing is adding water to the beach from the bay, which softens the sand. And from there, you just loosen up the anchor hold that the ducks have. It's pretty much all done by touch. And so the guys get a really good feel for the ground and how the water's moving through their hands as they get it down into the sand. you figure out how to pull up ducks without injuring them. In order to have a premium product in the market, it has to be perfect. Perfect white meat, no tears, no blisters, nothing like that. One harvester you know, could bring in anywhere between you know, 300 and 600 pounds in a day. Gooey ducks live for an extremely long time. There's gooey ducks that can live over 100 years and in size, there's been gooey ducks that have been found to be over 20 pounds in certain areas. So they can get really big and live a really long time. Gooey ducks have a unique shell that protects their, their organs. When you harvest them, you have to make sure you use a rubber band to keep it shut, because that's how they stay alive while they're being transported. But their necks will grow as long as two to three feet while they're deep in the sand to get to the surface and longer. And so they've got a very unique feature, uh, I guess, in order for them to survive. Good size to this duck, good weight, perfectly fine and healthy, but you'll see the discoloring. And in my opinion, it's not gonna affect the quality of the meat whatsoever, but aesthetically though, it is going to uh, lower the value. Gooey duck are sold live, and so when you harvest them, they are no longer in the water. The clock has started in order to get them from point A to point B. So right now, just getting the ducks onto a pallet so we can forklift them inside the plant, so. So our gooey ducks have four primary grades. And number one would be a gooey duck that is greater than one and a half to one and three quarters pounds. It's white meat, it's perfect condition. What our crew's gonna do is they're gonna evaluate the duck based on its color, mostly the siphon. I would say this would probably be a number two. You bring in everything from small runts to this, to larger variations like this. So these would be going to our restaurant directly all local, so these came out of the water possibly an hour ago. They'll be in a truck within the hour at location within a couple. So I mean, you're talking, best case scenario, maybe five hours from farm to location. Straight from the farms today, we've got a real treat. It's a six pound uh, gooey duck, but we don't get very many of these often. So yeah, let's check it out. That's by far the biggest one I've seen. We have different gradings of gooey ducks, from number threes all the way up to number ones. Obviously, this is a number one plus, plus, plus. So this guy will be a number three, and then next to a number one. These have been growing for millennia. It's a local delicacy, and it's kind of taken off now. These guys, they'll spray water out. Usually what ends up happening is a group of people that uh, maybe some bachelorette parties and they all line up here and 
take pictures and videos with uh, with our local guys here and you know we try to make them perform on demand but sometimes it's a little tough they get a little shy it'll be very surprising on how this tastes because the way it looks turns people off but the way it tastes is it's amazing so right now we're gonna choose this lovely guy here and we're gonna show you how to uh, prepare a gooey duck. So we're gonna take boiling water, we're gonna drop this guy in here really gently, and we're just gonna count to 10. All we're doing is making sure that the outer layer of skin is gonna be removable. Now we're just gonna let this chill. Now resting inside here is gonna be the gonad, the reproductive organ of the clam here. You can already tell that the skin is loosening up here. All you have to do is just peel, peel that off. Well, you can tell like how long that neck is. We're also gonna go and separate the belly from the siphon here. The siphon will have texture like calamari. The belly is just gonna be a lot more tender, actually. This is the intake valve where they're drinking in that water. You can tell that there's a little bit of sand in there, so once you pop this open, you're just wanna gonna give it a quick rinse. And there you have a nice clean siphon. And you're just gonna do real thin. And one of the biggest thing you're gonna see is this curling. A super fresh gooey duck is gonna curl like this. It doesn't really need anything. This is very, very sweet. And that's how you know that it's, it's really fresh. With the belly, we're gonna do the same exact cutting. A little more richness because of how fatty this belly is. But again, it's still very, very sweet. Yeah. So we have the belly here and then the siphon on this side. You want the flavor of the gooey duck to shine through. So you don't need a lot of other sauces or anything like that. This is local salmon roe, so simikura. So that's gonna add a little bit of salt, a little bit of texture, a little pop into this dish. The lemon turmeric will just kind of enhance the natural flavor of the gooey duck itself. Shellfish farming in general is built for people who wanna be outside. I mean, it is a hands-on work. Every single gooey duck was harvested by somebody's hand as they were, you know, waist deep <laughs> in mud uh, pulling it up. So it is a labor of love.